Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is algebraic graph theory. Today I would like to discuss another fine, fun, fine, fun, fun example of a matroid, uh, of a graphic matroid, something related to graphs. And after that, well, not today anymore, but after that, we will jump a little bit more into the vast valley of definitions of matroids. Um, anyway, so we really want to do a little bit of more examples just to get us set up with what matroids are. And then in this case, they are called transversal for a reason that is not 100% clear to me, but I will go to it, go with it and just call them transversal matroids. So more examples from graph theory. Um, okay, so what I need is a matching. So the previous graph theoretical example was a forest. Remember, there was kind of forests in graphs. And now I'm interested in matchings in graphs. And a matching is the following. So you have a graph. Well, here's a graph. And a matching is, an, well, you, you set, you kind of color edges in your graph such that they don't have any vertices in common. So here's a matching because all of my edges don't have any vertices in common. What I couldn't do, so if I would do something like this and this, this is not a matching because they have a vertex in common. And matchings are kind of really, really popular in graph theory and very, very common to describe real world situations. So here in my little example, I think of uh, people that uh, just have some names, fine. Well, I could have called them A, B, C, D, I guess, but I stole this picture. I should have called them A, B, C, D. I'm sorry. So I have person A, I have person B, I have person C, I have person D, and they're kind of, let's say they're employees at certain companies. So I have company B, I have company A, I have company G, and I have company C. And the matching is just who works for who for what company. And ignoring all kind of funny, funny things like nobody works for two companies and no company has the same uh, kind of person. And kind of this association would be a matching, right? So um, and you can ask those questions in more generality, how you can you match people and jobs or maybe dating or whatever. You can you can imagine many matching problems. Um, yeah, and maybe matchings are some are related to matroids, and they are. And this will turn out later to be kind of something crucial, which I'm going to mention later. But right now, it's just this example. So I hope it's reasonably clear what a matching is. Just a collection of edges with no common uh, vertices. And that's just what a matching is. Like matching employees with companies. Uh, so here, my sadly messed up story. I wanted to have A, B, C, D, and maybe X, Y, Z, and W, maybe. Oh, fine. Uh, but anyway, okay, so here's a graph and I've listed, well, let's say I've stolen all maximal matching. So a max maxing is max maximal if you can't add any edge anymore. So let's have a look at the first one. So you can't add any edge here because all vertices are already taken. And it turns out, as you, if you look at this, they have all the same number of uh, vertices and they have all the same number of edges and they have all the same size. So for a bipartite graph, so here's a bipartite graph. Bipartite just means, as in the previous example, I can I have blue vertices and I have red vertices, and they don't share any common edge. Right here, I have a less obvious bipartite graph. It has blue vertices and it has red vertices, and they don't share any common edge. So um, what I mean by common edge is no blue is connected to a blue and no red is connected to a red. Fine. Okay, this is clear here. If I do get those here red and I get those here blue, that's fine. That's a bipartite graph. Here's a less obvious bipartite graph. Okay, and it turns out that those matchings, these this maximal matchings, are all of the same size for bipartite graphs. That's kind of a, well, now it's a fact. I just present it as a fact, but this is kind of an observation you would do yourself if you would study um, bipartite graphs. And let's say it wouldn't be known, you wouldn't Google it, uh, you wouldn't ask Dr. Google, but let's say you're living in the 50s and you would need to come up with this yourself, you would eventually. It's not really difficult. That's all I'm saying. Um, and this somehow reminds us of bases, right? This kind of reminds us of the defining property or defining property of a, of a matroid, like bases. They're all of the same size. And this was essentially the upshot of a matroid or the definition of a matroid or a property of a matroid, whatever you want to call it. This looks terribly like this is exactly the same. So we should be able to somehow cook up a matroid 
from matchings. And that's exactly the transversal uh, matroid. And transversal may be in the sense that they don't have any common edges. But anyway, um, we just call it the transversal matroid. And you really have to exchange property for, for such matroids. So here I have a uh, one of my favorite bipartite graphs. I put a green vertex in the middle, and maybe I should make it blue because I had it blue before. So I put a blue vertex in the middle, and I put red vertexes, vertices, vertices around. They're called uh, whatever. These graphs are called star graphs for the uh, hopefully self explaining reason. Anyway, so this is clearly bipartite. And what is a maximum matching in this case? A maximum matching is you pick one edge because everything shares the vertex with the middle edge, so that's all you can do. Um, but now you can exchange vectors in my bases in a very simple way, you just put it in another edge. And that's really the basis exchange property in, in this example of a, well, a very easy bipartite graph. So not just we observe that, well, all bases or wannabe bases are of the same size, no. We also observe that our basis exchange property holds. Well, let, let's say in this easy example, but you can easily check that for all bipartite graphs. So again, something you would observe eventually if you're studying bipartite graphs. So we should just be able to define a matroid based on matches. And there you go, that's a transversal matroid. So a transversal matroid is really just, you have a graph and it has, well, let's say uh, red vertices and blue vertices and some edges between them, the usual bipartite graph. And we just take the linear appendant sets are uh, the vertices in X. So you kind of need to just take one of them. That's where the bipartite comes in. And then they are part of a matching. So here, um, well, I did it red. So here, for example, this one is part of a matching. Or this one is part of a matching. Uh, so this is, sorry, this is linear dependent in, in this case. And the, uh, the bases are the maximal ones. So in the star graph, well, there, there are only, well, the only bases are exactly uh, the, but the different vertices, and there are no non city non-linear, uh, linear independent sets. So everything is a basis in this case. But this works, and it's kind of fun. So now you have two examples from graph theory, one about forests, and the one about matchings, and they look very different, and they both fit under the umbrella of a matroid which makes matroids so fantastic. It's like very different looking things. They both fit into the umbrella. So whenever we develop now a theory of matroids, and I can promise you that one is fantastic, you will prove statements about both. And they just look very different from the outset. And I think that's just um, fantastic. Well, here is another example of a transversal matroid, kind of the other extreme. So here, Everything is a basis. There are no non-city, non-linear uh, dependent sets. And here is exactly the, the opposite. The other extreme, um, the graph from before. So in the star case, all non-city, I should have written non-city here, I apologize. All non-city linear independent sets are bases. And for the cube graph, it's exactly the opposite. There's only one basis and it arises from many matchings. So I also put this here because uh, this many matchings can give the same uh, type of matroid, sorry, the type of linear independent set. So all of these, because I only consider the vertices and all vertices are included, give the same linear independent set. So it's more like we are studying vertices of matchings than matchings themselves. But that's a slight flaw in the story, uh, which I'm trying to hide under the rack. No, I'm not trying to hide it. It's just what it is. And it actually, the story is still fantastic. Um, so matchings essentially form another class of nice examples of a matroid works for every bipartite graph. So we have two different examples of bipartite graphs, uh, sorry, of graph uh, matroids, and we had the linear independence matroid, and there are several more obscure matroids that we are going to explain. And I say it again, that's the whole point. So there will be a very rich theory of matroids. That's not clear from the outset, but there is. My word, um, well, you shouldn't take my word serious, but let's, let's try again. My word uh, that there is a very nice theory of those of those uh, matroids. So you can use theorems that, that, that you can prove in the matroid theory and then say something about very, very different looking examples. And I think that's just fabulous. I think that's just absolutely fabulous. And no wonder matroid theory is kind of very prominent in modern mathematics. 
Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I also hope to see you next time.